everyone, and welcome to another Deep Dive with us. You know, empowerment, it's like one of those words everyone throws around, right? But then yeah. when you actually try to, like, grab onto it, yeah. it's kind of like trying to hold smoke. It is. It just slips right through your fingers. Yeah. You ever feel that? Oh, yeah. All the time. And especially, it seems like, in your own life, when you're thinking about mention specific context from listener's notes. Exactly. So today we are diving deep into what real empowerment looks like, not just like the surface level stuff. Right. Exactly. The nitty gritty. Exactly. And well, you know, you brought the perfect thing. They did. You did. Your notes. Oh, yes. Yes. I love that you're already like bringing this into your own world right. and thinking about it. So well, I love seeing what you're connecting to. Yeah. Right. But we're also bringing in some reinforcements from get this 1993. Oh, wow. Vintage. I know. Right. Sounds ancient. But this article, Empowerment is Work, Not Magic, let me tell you, it holds up. Even today. It really does. Right. Which just goes to show you, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the world is completely different, especially with all the tech. Totally. But when it comes to the core stuff about empowerment, mm. Yeah, this article nailed it. Okay, so give it to me straight. What's the big takeaway? What's this article really saying? Imagine you're trying to, like, be a house. Okay. But with just, like, willpower. Uh-oh. You've got the vision. Right? right. You can picture. You can yeah. see it. But without the actual bricks, the tools, the blueprints, right. you're not going to get very far. It's not going to happen. And that's what this article's getting at. Ditch the quick fix idea of empowerment yeah. and understand it's a process. Okay, so it's not that like you go, girl, <laughs> energy drink. Uh, it's about you, creating uh, lasting change. Yes, yeah. it's about building someone's capacity to act, not just making them feel good temporarily. Like they use this phrase, psychological conditions. Ooh, sounds kind of fancy, <laughs> but know. it basically means tackling those inner roadblocks we all have. You know, totally. Self-doubt, feeling stuck, all that jazz. Oh, tell me about it. I've been there. You've been there. We've all been there. But here's the thing. The article doesn't stop at the internal stuff. It's like, okay, you got to deal with your own headspace. But then there's the outside world too. Right. The material conditions that can either help or, you know, totally hinder empowerment. Okay, so give me an example. What do you mean by that? Think access to resources. Education. A safe environment. I mean, you can't expect someone to go out and conquer the world if their basic needs aren't even met. No. Right? No. It's like trying to run a marathon on an empty stomach. <laughs> Good luck with that. So you need that inner drive, yeah, but you also need support from the outside, too. Which is really interesting when I think about what you put in your notes. Uh -huh. You mentioned how you were seeing this play out in your own world. Mention specific context from the listener's notes. What? Totally. And it's like, what's so cool about your notes is that you're bringing those like material conditions to life, you know? Like you mentioned how, give an example from listener's notes that illustrates this, for example, even the most talented team members can't succeed without proper training and support. Or yeah. it's hard for community members to feel empowered to advocate for change if they're constantly worried about basic necessities. Yeah. It's like this light bulb went off when I read that in the article, yeah. you know, because it's so easy to just assume everyone's starting at the same place yeah. with that like solid ground beneath them. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just often not the case at all. So true. And like in my own world, give a specific example from listeners notes about a time when this assumption caused problems or hindered someone's empowerment. Wow. You know, that is such a powerful example of how much overlooking those material conditions can really backfire. Yeah. And it ties into what the article talks about, this danger of false empowerment. Ooh, interesting. Right. Where you like feel empowered, maybe. Yeah. But you don't actually have the tools or resources to actually do anything. Right. You're not set up for success. It's like being handed like an empty toolbox. Totally. It's like saying, go climb that mountain but not giving them any like gear yes. or maps or even like what the weather's like. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I think this article, even though it was written, you know, decades ago. Right. It's still so relevant today. Totally. Because it reminds us to look beyond those like surface level solutions and really ask, what does this person or this group of people, what do they actually need to thrive? Yeah. You know, like what would actually equip them to climb that mountain? So it's not just about like cheering them on. Right. It's about making sure they have the right like yes. tools and support. Support, yeah. To actually reach the top. To reach the summit, exactly. And that's where those material conditions come in. 
access mm-hmm. to information, mentorship, a supportive network. Yeah. Even just having basic needs met so they can, you know, free up that mental space to focus on bigger goals. And I'm betting, too, that that year, those needs, they probably look different for everyone. Oh, absolutely. I mean, a seasoned climber needs different support from someone who's, like, never even touched a climbing wall. 100%. This article mainly focuses on women's empowerment, which, you know, makes sense for the time it was written. Right. But it got me thinking about how much broader this whole idea is yeah. and how those empowering tools, mm-hmm. they're going to be totally different depending on the person, their background, their culture. Oh, that's huge. Right. Because what's empowering in one culture could be totally different, even the opposite in another. Exactly. And that's where I think your notes add like such a valuable layer to this whole conversation. Oh, cool. Because you've been wrestling with this in the context of mention the listener's context again, which is fascinating because it's, the article gives us this like blueprint. Yeah. But then you got to like think about the terrain, the climate. Right. The right. actual journey for each person. Exactly. One size fits all. It just doesn't work that way with empowerment. Nope. And you've been seeing this firsthand, right? Yeah. Thinking about how empowerment plays out so differently. Yeah. In mentioned a specific example from the listener's notes, G different departments at work, various community groups, contrasting personal growth approaches. It's true. And it gets even, I don't, trickier. Yeah. When you remember the article mostly focuses on empowerment within systems like workplaces. Right. right, But then there's this whole other thing. Yes. About like individual dynamics. That's huge. Yeah. Come into play, too. Because even in a system that's like designed to be empowering. Right your experience could be totally different. Yeah. Depending on like where you are in that system. Totally. Like imagine someone who's brand new to listeners context. Okay. Yeah. Versus someone who's been around for years. Right. They're not going to have the same experience at all. Right. Totally different levels of like access, influence, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. understanding those unspoken rules. Yeah. Yeah. All those things that really impact whether someone feels empowered to act. It's like that saying knowledge is power. Right. But even more than that, it's like having the confidence to use that knowledge. Yes. Wonderful. And actually speak up, make choices, really own it. And that's where I think those material conditions we were talking about. Yeah. They're even more crucial. Right. Because if you're worried about like your basic needs Mm -hmm. or you're feeling intimidated or you don't have the right connections. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much potential you have it's going to be that much harder to tap into it. It's like trying to climb that mountain, but like blindfolded. Exactly. Which, okay, this is what's blowing my mind right now. This article is from 1993. Right. Before the internet, before social media. Right. It's a whole different world of like material conditions now. It's a whole other ball game. Right. Like technology has added this whole other dimension to this whole conversation about empowerment. For sure. I mean, on the one hand, Information at your fingertips. Right. Connecting with people across the world who get you. Platforms to, like, share your voice. It's amazing. That's powerful. It's mind-blowing when you really compare it to, like, the world this article was written in. I know. Right. But here's the thing. Technology itself. Yeah. It's not inherently empowering. Okay. It's a tool. That's true. And like any tool, it can be used to build up or to tear down. Yeah, it's that double-edged sword thing again, right? Right. Like every amazing opportunity comes with a potential downside too. For sure. And we see that all the time. Online, Mm -hmm. harassment, silencing voices, algorithms with like built-in biases, misinformation spreading like crazy. It's true. It creates new barriers. Especially for people who are already dealing with so much. Yes, absolutely. It's like technology. It's a magnifier almost. Yeah. It makes everything louder, good or bad. It amplifies everything, yeah. So how do we actually navigate that? How do we make sure we're using the good, the empowering parts without falling into the traps? That is the million dollar question. And it's not an easy one. Right. But I think even starting with this article, Mm. you know, even though it's a few years old. Yeah. It gives us a really good place to start because it forces us to look beyond those simple solutions, mm. the slogans, the catchphrases, and dig into what's really going on. Yeah, like what actually helps people thrive. Exactly. Love. What does it actually take for someone to feel truly supported? Yeah. Equipped, free to act on their own terms. That's what it's all about. I feel like we've been building this like 
toolkit this whole time. Yes. Understanding the barriers, remembering empowerment's not one size fits all. Right. Thinking about technology's role, it's a lot. It is. And it's not about having all the answers right now. It's about asking the right questions. And then actually like doing something with those questions. Exactly. What would it look like to create spaces online, offline, hmm. where everyone has a chance to build that capacity to act? I love that. It's a challenge for sure. And you know what? It makes me realize empowerment, it's not a finish line, right? Right. It's like always evolving. It's a journey. It's a process. Exactly. Of questioning, adapting, trying to build a better world. Beautifully said. This has been so eye-opening, really. It's been a pleasure diving in with you. Thanks for being here. And to everyone listening, keep those questions coming. Keep challenging those assumptions. That's how we create real change, right? 100%. Until next time. 